Boy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 98 of the In From Japan podcast, the podcast where we talk about the latest news on Japan developed games and other things in relation to them, available on YouTube and in most places podcasts can be found. As always, I'm your host, Errol Moss, with my co-host, the Phenomenon from Suriname, Jason Corder. Hey, hey. And uh, we're going to skip housekeeping because uh, we don't have any. Our um, house we're is gonna in order. Right into the we're going to get right into the Japanese games we've been playing. So I uh, I finished Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Well, by finished, I mean I beat the Pokemon League. No, oh, okay. I was having trouble because of just a uh, lack of healing items and kind of just how my how my team was. A lot of my team was pretty slow. Uh but then so what happened was it was funny cuz uh I, I kept getting to, like, Flint, mm-hmm. as far as Flint, and then a couple times I got to Lucin, and then, like, one or two times I got all the way to Cynthia, but because of that lack of healing items was mm-hmm. still an issue. And I, I, I didn't be, until... So, Honchkrow is very slow. Okay. And my Honch, my Honchkrow happened to have a nature that decreased its speed on top of that. Oh, no. <laughs> So that was one of the problems. And the other problem was Flint's Drift Blim, which has minimize and it raises evasiveness a lot. But, you know, I had my Licky Licky with Disable, and I taught my Patchy Risu Shockwave, which never misses. So I got through that eventually. And then I switched. So what happened was I switched. I went to the underground to go find, get a Togepi. Because mm-hmm. I don't know how much you've done the Grand Underground, but like what whatever statues you have in your little secret base affect mm-hmm. what types can affect what types of pokemon appear yeah i've i've heard about that so i switched it to fairy and then went down to cuz it's like i think it might be the only way to get togepi since cynthia doesn't give you an egg anymore um uh, okay so what was what i wanted to happen was uh what i meant <laughs> Uh, was that Togepi, because it was already, like, level 50 when I caught it, Mm because, you know, the Grand Underground scales with you. Um, It was going to evolve into... It was going to evolve into Togetic, and then... And then evolve into... And then I already had a Shiny Stone, so it would evolve into Togekiss, and I'm like, oh, this will be a lot better. But, (laughs) basically, its friendship was never quite high enough, Mm -hmm. so... (laughs) But like it turns out, I didn't even need it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I just randomly in in the and I and I I showed you, but in the uh, in the little like congratulations champion uh, little uh, like image at the end, there's just a toga there. <laughs> so I'm I'm kind of surprised you you didn't have that much trouble with Cynthia because all I no so uh-huh. the the worst thing about Cynthia was her Milotic. Hmm. And that was just because it used recover, and my it had it used recover. My patchy Rusu didn't do that much damage, and the carnivine, which is um, carnivine, didn't do all that much damage. And it has and Milotic has ice beam. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> that, yeah, it's um, interesting. A lot of people are like, a lot of people have said like Milotic has recover. Like they didn't even get because they defeated it so fast. But her guard chomp, uh-huh. I was like, oh no, here comes her guard chomp. And then I sent out my Mamoswine. It uh, Mamoswine took a hit and then uh, one shot at Garchomp. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it was like, oh, it's gonna eat this berry, so Ice type attacks aren't. S- it'll protect it from a super effective Ice type attacks. Not enough. Not enough. <laughs> Mamoswine was looking mm. for blood. <laughs> um. Yeah. But yeah, that's been pretty fun, and then. I think it's to unlock a lot of the post game stuff. I have to think you have to finish the national decks, but or like at least see everything that's in the national decks, not necessarily catch them. And I have a few missing, so I can't do a lot of that yet. I don't mm. know if I'll go back to that or not. Well, I know there was be? also an update, so you can't get Darkrai or Shyman uh, through uh-huh. the glitches anymore. Or could it be but that's not national decks? Could it be that um, you have to? battle against uh excuse me uh people who have a different version 
then that way you can see all the other Pokemon in the National Oh, Lynch. no, because usually, usually there are plenty of those Pokemon. Like, there's at least one trainer with one of those Pokemon in the game. The only one that I think... The, the only one that I can think of that's in the regional decks mm. um, that a trainer doesn't have is Palkia, and you get that from going back and talking to Cynthia's grandmother real quick. She gives you the image for it. Like, this is mm, what it looks okay. like. Um. So I don't know when I'll go when I'll be going back to that, or if we'll see. Yeah. Um I might try to do like a. I might put some of my my favorite Pokemon that I use in in Pokemon Home when that has functionality next year, and then do like a a a run like a Monotype run or a Nuzlocke run or something. Yeah, because that's the game. I feel like I can do that in easily, not easily, but like. Function wise, I don't know. No, I get it. Um, and then I've been pl playing some uh, Final Fantasy fourteen post Shadowbringers in anticipation to Endwalker. Story is getting pretty interesting for me, so I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's good. Yeah, because you then, were. Then sometimes it's like there's mm -hmm. still this like is juxta juxtaposition the right word of like. Oh no! This like oh, this is happening, and this guy is disguised as this other guy, and uh, this and that, and uh, you have to you have to fix this, and mm -hmm. then it's like, go do this really uh like go do this weird task. That mm -hmm. like it like that like it has a like it plot wise it does technically have a purpose but it just kind of feels like filler. Mm -hmm. Just like uh -huh. oh yeah, get all the spots that have this thing on it or whatever. And I'm just like, do do we really need this? Like this seems like a really unnecessary quest. Well, you know they've got to fill for time somehow. I know, but like sometimes it's just like. It, it just feels so... Because some, some of them are so quick that it's just like, I don't think they really needed that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm no, still... I get it. I, I'm, I maxed out... I probably said this a while ago, but I maxed out my Dark Knight. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't plan on doing any other classes for now. At some point, I want to level up my Palad into 80 because that the, that's the first... Um, mm -hmm you know, the first, like, big job I had. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when Endwalker comes out, I plan on doing some Reaper stuff. Just to yeah. try it out. Um, um also, did you know you that in mm -hmm. Final Fantasy XI, uh, Dark Knight, uh, are DPS, and can use Scythe? And actually, most of the art depicts them with Scythe. <laughs> huh. Interesting. In Final Fantasy VII? Yeah, it's it's much different. Very interesting. Yeah. Especially well, given I that mean, like Dark Knights and other Final Fantasy games are still more similar to the Final Fantasy fourteen version. Yeah, I think in in eleven they really wanted to experiment with what they had and how they could portray that. I I remember Final Fantasy twelve, um, one of the design goals was to use different names and titles and and um uh classes that are similar to the established you know D D uh class sets um that's that's why you have so many uh different names and varieties in 12 so it's it's definitely mm. something they've they've done before yeah yeah um but yeah, that's all I've really been playing. I'm trying to think if I played anything. Oh, I played a little bit of, of Puyo Puyo today. Puyo Puyo Champions. Oh, okay. That's always fun. That game is hard when you don't know how to... When, when Well, that game is just kind of difficult in general, but I had to lower mm -hmm. the difficulty to like the easiest, and it still wasn't mm -hmm. like too easy, but it was a lot more manageable. <laughs> okay, that's good. Just doing like a quick play thing. Because when it's when it's like the regular level, everything goes so fast, and I'm just like, okay, what's the strategy here? And, and before I know it, I'm gone. <laughs> Understandable. 
Um, yeah, so um, you've been playing some Pokemon as well? Yeah, um, still? still playing Pokemon Shining Pearl. I'm on my seventh badge, heading uh, into my eighth. Um, I have to do the lake main quest thingy. The, 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 it's where Team Galaxy does the bad stuff and you have to go to three lakes to... Right. To, to and the warehouse. And the warehouse to figure out what's going on. So I'm doing that. Do you know the warehouse? You continue with the main. The warehouse is the only mm -hmm. place. No, I'm, I'm not at the warehouse. Get a just... Oh. Uh huh. Oh, you didn't do the warehouse yet. Or you? No, not you did the warehouse already, right? Uh. But, or maybe you're about to go back to it. I just don't remember. I'm at this point. I'm heading to Snow Peak City, if that's the name. Snow Point City. Or Snow yeah. Point City. Yeah. So I think you might have you go back to the warehouse, but oh, okay. um, that's the only place I believe that's the only place besides post game mm -hmm. where you can find a dusk stone. Ah, oh, interesting. I'm yeah. I'm not the biggest collector of those kinds of things because they always give. In, in case you wanna, in case you wanna evolve your Mister Viz. Oh, I know. Uh, the the thing is, those those evolutionary stones always give me. Uh, anxiety because I never know on which Pokemon to use it. Like, do I use my shiny stone to evolve Togepi, or do I use my shiny stone to evolve? Uh, what's it called? the The one that comes after Badoo. Uh, Roserade. Yeah. Yeah. So no, Roselia <laughs> into Roserade. Yeah, exactly. So th th that's also always this thing that that keeps me up. Like, uh, okay, no choice paralysis. I don't want to think about this, so I just avoid it mostly. Um, I'll see how I'll fare with the rest of the game. Um, yeah, so I'm on my seven badge. I'm I'm not really in a hurry. I'm just surprised hmm. that there's so much game in this game. I'm, I think at twenty hours at this point, and it's still not done. It's like probably the half of the story at this point. And mm. I'm, I'm kind of surprised and um, pleasantly surprised that is. So there's there's a lot more for me to do. And then there's the Elite Four, the the, the, the Grand Underground I still have to explore. And um, then post game you have like Romanus Park with all the extra legendaries and the battle yeah, tower. So so there, there will be plenty for me to do still, and I, I, I think maybe when I'm done with that, I, if I'm, you know, hankering for enough Pokemon still, I, I could probably do the DLC for Pokemon Shield. So I'll see how that goes. Um, and I also have a Black Friday purchase, which is surprise, surprise, Castlevania Advanced Collection, um, which. My Black Friday purchase also included Castlevania, but it was yes. Lords of Shadow because so it was like four bucks. So there you go. Um, I wasn't planning on buying this because um, you may have seen the tweet where I said that I'm I'm kind of or I was at least saving up my extra credit, my gold coins, and whatever remains on my balance to buy the second Famicom Detective Club game. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know. Just outright buy it, but I digress. So I I had some uh, money left over, and I saw Castlevania, and I love Castlevania, and I wanted to have Castlevania. So I figured, why not? So I did that. Um, I jumped straight into Aria of Sorrow. Uh, I I I wasn't even gonna contemplate going through it chronologically. So I'm now also playing uh, Castlevania: Area of Sorrow. I'm mm. about fifty percent through the 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 game, and that went by really quick, which which really surprised me. It's like I think four to five hours, um, mm. and it. Just, I need to try those at some point. I it, do have the double pack. It just feels so good, so fun, um, and so easy to pick up and play, and mm. uh, it it it's. Fairly well paced, I'd say. Um, 
and yeah it, it it's it's just kind of this nostalgic cup of noodle soup that that warms your soul from from within <laughs> and I, the the funny thing is i i played it and i was kept thinking to myself hmm this would have been great if it had some of the metroid dread enhancements like being <laughs> able to pin where where interesting items are on your map or have, yeah. having the sex there's uh, flash indicating that oh you 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 still have an item here to collect because the backtracking it's not the most difficult thing but sometimes you mm-hmm. do forget what you're supposed to be doing um, but or maybe maybe the uh, the next blood stained will have something like that <laughs> yeah fingers crossed. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. I wasn't going to play Castlevania because I knew it would distract me from Pokemon, and lo and behold, it did. <laughs> so uh, you should just play the. Wait, what doesn't like one of the Castlevania games have like not Pokemon like elements, but like you get get creatures that you can summon um, or something? It's I th- I forgot I, which one it, that was. I, I I might be mistaken, but it could be all three of the advanced. Uh, Game Boy Advance games, mm. um, not not so much that you collect uh, demons to to use, but more right. that um, at least in Area of Sorrow, it's that the more you fight against enemies, the more likely they are to drop uh, their spirit, which you can then equip. For example, one spirit gives you like a boost to your abilities, like all your stats. Yeah, the more spirits you collect. Another lets you walk on water. Another lets you double jump. That that sort of thing, um, or the double jump might be a boss upgrade. I I I might be misremembering that. But yeah, that's that's kind of how you progress through the game, and you can then equip uh, certain spirits to give you an edge in battle. Um, yeah. And I think Harmony of Dissonance has a similar system. Um, where you can kind of mm. mix and match between spirits to to power up your your Belmont, I think it's a Belmont, and in Castle in <laughs> Circle of the Moon, I don't know how that system would work. Um, mm. So yeah, I'll, I'll probably get around to it one of these days. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, what I've been playing. All right. Oh, by the way, so, uh, one, one quick question. What? Have you put any more time into this Jump Force? No. Oh, okay. Because it, it was on such a deep discount, and I was really hemming and hawing. Should I get it? Should I? I, I did get the rest of the characters. Oh, okay. But, okay. So, but yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. Maybe I'll do it once it's on sale again. Uh any any time this before year it, or, or next year before yeah, it. B- before it gets delisted. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So moving on to the in from Japan J list, recent video game related, uh, recent video game related <laughs> entertainment news. Uh, we have King's Glaive Final Fantasy 15 4K Remaster box set to release in February. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. Square Enix announced King's Glaive Final Fantasy 15 will receive a 4K Remaster box set on February 9th, 2022. It will cost 13,200 yen or 116 dollars. The 4K remaster box set will come with two Blu-ray discs, an art card, a scenario book, and file fragments. Additionally, the Kingsclave Final Fantasy XV 4K remaster will feature audio commentary from the production team. This includes commentary from director Takeshi Nozue. Square Enix opened a special promotional website for the release of the 4K remaster. The website features several screenshots featuring remastered scenes from Kingsclave Final Fantasy XV. Additionally, it also reveals pre-order bonuses for several stores. This includes the Square Enix e-store pre-order bonuses, which come with a Morble Coon clear file. Morble Coon featured in a special Kingsglaive Final Fantasy XV cinematic, which showed a nameless man fighting Ultras. Kingsglaive Final Fantasy XV is a CGI... Fi- oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you have to add that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's only in Japan for now. It's bound to come to the West. Then we have a new Bleach anime trailer and visual coming December 18th. This is by Carly Garcia for Silicon Era. The first 
trailer and visual for the upcoming Bleach anime project will be unveiled in a live stream on December 18, 2021. A new project was announced in March 2020 to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Bleach manga series. This was confirmed to be a TV series earlier this month. It will tell the story of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, the final story arc of the manga series. The live stream event, Super Stage EX Bleach, will feature Ichigo's voice actor Masakazu Morita, Ishida's voice actor Noriaki Sugiyama, and Rukia's voice actress Fumiko Orikasa. The editor of Shonen Jump, Shu Murakoshi, will also make an appearance. The latter also served as the producer of Burn the Witch. The presentation will begin at 1 a.m. Pacific Time, 4 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, um, wait, no, not Central European Time, and 6 p.m. Japanese Standard Time, or Japan Standard Time, on December 18, 2021, but it is unknown exactly when the new Bleach anime trailer will appear. Hmm. So I'm Fun sure you're fact, excited about uh, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really stoked to see what this all will contain, uh, uh, contain or entail, I should say entail. Um, yes. uh, you were trying to combine yeah, the so, two words. Yeah, I, I don't know why it was mixing up in my head. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm super excited. I can't wait to see it. I'm wondering how many episodes the final season will be, or if it would be broken up in, let's say, two cores of twelve episodes or two cores of twenty-four episodes. What what will it look like? How much bleach can we look forward to? And couple that with, will they also be adapting that that um, post time skip? Uh, is it post time skip? Should I should I say that uh, time jump? Uh, the time jump uh, story that was featured earlier this year in Shonen Jump. Will they also be working that that into the plot? Will we see any more integration mm. with Burn the Witch? What what are what can we expect? I'm looking forward to to have all those questions answered. Um, but yeah, it's it's a super g- good time to be a Bleach fan. Oh, yeah. and I was going to add a um, fun fact. Uh, Ishida Uryu, or Uryu Ishida, whatever you want to call him. Um, his voice actor, Noriaki Sugiyama, is also the voice actor for uh, Sasuke in Naruto. So he has played mm. two rivals in two uh, yeah, Shonen Jump properties and two of the big three uh, shows. Uh, so that's 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 mm-hmm. a fun fun fact there. Yeah. Um. Next is Full Metal Alchemist board game available to pre-order in the U.S. This is once again by Carly Garcia for Silicon Era. The upcoming Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood: The Promised Day board game is now available to pre-order from the North American Square Enix store. The tabletop game was announced in October 2021 and will release in North America sometime in April 2022. It retails for $54.99. The release is part of the series' 20th anniversary celebration. The board game will support up to four players ages 13 and up and will take up to 45 minutes to complete. Players will act as popular characters from the series and will work cooperatively to defeat the mannequin soldiers and homunculi to to complete the reverse transmutation circle. It is possible to play the game solo, and the game will offer novice hard and ultimate difficulty modes. Square Enix is currently working on a Fullmetal Alchemist mobile game with more information due to be announced before the end of the year. Uh, in July, original manga creator Hi- Hiromu Arakawa announced a new manga series was in the work. The series, titled Yomi no Sukai, is slated to debut in Monthly Shonen Gangang on December 10, 2021. It will f- oh yeah, we talked about this a while back. Mm-hmm. Something about a jail and a village. and Yeah. Um... And the next is uh, Shaman King Anime Season, Season 1, Part 2, heads to Netflix next week. This is by Jenny Lotta for Silicon Era. Uh, even more of the new Shaman King Anime Season 1 will appear soon, as Netflix confirmed the air date for Part 2. The next block of, ep- block of episodes will appear on December 9th, 2021. There's also a new trailer to showcase it. However, the streaming service didn't note how many episodes will be in this block. 
Um, and the, f the first portion of the new Shaman King anime adaptation launched on Netflix in August 2021. Um, in Japan, but, oh, when it arrived, people could watch the first 13 episodes. In Japan, 34 episodes appeared so far and 52 are planned. If the release follows an established pattern, Season 1, Part 2 of Shaman King could consist of Episodes 14 through 26. Uh, it's been a good time for Shaman King media in general. For example, all 35 main volumes were finally released in English. The spin-offs also appeared outside of Japan. There have also been plenty of new figures announced. Maybe a new game is on the horizon eventually, too. I mean, that last part was me adding mm. stuff. So. Yeah. It would be like Koei Tecmo Shaman King, and it just plays like Neo, and it's a, the the spirits are like. <laughs> hey, that's not <laughs> a hey, bad it would idea. Work. Yeah, it would. <laughs> um, next up we have Ninjala TV anime unveils cast, staff, theme song, artist in January eighth debut. This is by Egan Liu for Anime News Network. The official website for the television anime of Gung Ho Entertainment's. Gung Ho Online Entertainment's Ninjala Nintendo Switch game announced the anime's main cast, main staff, theme song artist, and January 8th premiere on Thursday. The website also posted the anime's key visual. Um, I'm not going to go through all the voice actors, but um, Mamoru Kanbe, the promised Neverland and Elfin lead, is directing the television anime at OLM, who OLM is also known for... Uh, animating Pokemon and also I believe the original Berserk anime mm. among other things possible uh, Shinzo Fujita to your eternity Mazen Kaiser Shin Megami Tensei Devil Children is in charge of the series scripts Atsushi Suzuki Pokemon the movie The Power of Us animation director is designing the characters and then there's sound and music um Yasuyuki Uragami is directing the sound, and Takur Takahiro Oba Obata, Cinderella 9, and The Promised Neverland is composing the music. Singer Kiari Pamu Pamu is returning from the game itself, and the net animated performed the television's anime opening theme song, Maybe ba <laughs> Oh, Maybe Baby Singer Wolf's Carter is performing the ending th theme song, Ninja, Ninja Like Ninja. Which was written, composed, and arranged by Nayutalian? I don't know who that is. And, and it'll air on TV Tokyo and other, live other affiliated stations on Saturday, January 8th at 10.30 a.m. Uh, January 9th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh-huh. Are you excited for this? Because you're basically the only ninja stand I know about. I'm interested, mm. although we'll have to see if it's officially subtitled or dubbed or what have you. Yeah. Um, and then JoJo Part Six is out on Netflix now. Uh, the first is it just one the first episode? Because I know they're supposed to be doing it on Wednesdays uh, weekly. I don't know. Me, let me have a look. See, surprised you're not advertising that Cowboy Beef is also on Netflix. <laughs> Uh, I don't need to advertise that. I heard so many mixed things about it that I'm like, I don't... Some of that dialogue is very bad. Yeah. Uh, looking it up now... Look, if, if, if you're curious about Cowboy Bebop, go, go watch it. But I warn you that it's not... There are parts of it that are not great. You, you have been warned. Um... JoJo's Bizarre Adventure uh, Stone Ocean is fully available. Okay, so wait. That's mm. Phantom Blood, Blood Ten, Battle Tendency. That's part one and two. Stardust Crusaders is part three. Part three. And I'm seeing Diamond is Unbreakable is part four. F four. But it then just automatically skips to Stone Ocean? Part five is, that, is there. Not on Netflix. On, on our Netflix it is. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's also nowhere on, on no one's Netflix. It's it's one of the things people have been scratching their heads at. Um, no, they just put part week. five on recent. No, I thought they just put. Oh, did they accidentally? I want. Did they just take part five off? Because I know they I, just I added think, it really recently. I think that's what happened. They they removed it and then they put Stone Ocean. 
I wonder if that's either a mistake or like the hmm. That's really weird. Yeah. Also, Eden Zero has a, a new uh, batch of episodes on Netflix. So uh, shout out that, to our buddy Sean Chiplock. Yeah. So give that a check if you. Who's if also you Spider-Man it. in the Avengers now? Good for yes. him. Yes. Good for him. Um. Next up, we got recommended content. Content from the past week other than news listed out in the description and on the paste man. We have We Need Pokemon League Manager by Graham Russell for Silicon Era. The MCU Stole Spider-Man's Entire Arc from Pokemon's The Sword of Justice by Eric Switzer for The Gamer. Super Robot Wars 30 Makes the Multiverse Feel Massive by Josh Tolentino for Silicon Era. Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker's Long Blue Moon Cactar A Review by Michael Hyam over at Fan By It. And Sonic the Hedgehog at Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, an oral history by Jack Yarwood for Polygon. So next it's time for the news rundown, and I'll let our Shinigami and Bearer of Bad News take it away. Yeah, a Bankai. First up, we have Monster Hunter World Assassin's Creed crossover is ending. This is by Jenny Alada for Silicon Era. One Monster Hunter crossover is about to come to an end. Capcom announced the Assassin's Creed Monster Hunter World event is about to end. On December 3rd, 2021, the quest will be removed. Um, However, if you already took part in them, you get to keep the rewards permanently. The Monster Hunter World Assassin's Creed crossover involved looks inspired by Assassin's Creed Origins. It launched in 2018. Um, STF Silent? Deadly and Fierce? That people fight... I don't know what that means. That people fight Odogaron? Okay. Devil Joe and Lunastra. When you'd win, you'd get Senu's Feather. You could then use those to make Bayek layered armor and Assassin's Hood Mantle. That mantle has unique properties and after you make it, gives you a background pose and some titles. In 2020, a follow-up allowed people to make the Assassin's Hood uh master rank mantle yeah so click on the article if you want to read more um i did not know that there were still ongoing uh things in monster hunter world but this is cool to see next up godzilla destruction will shut down in january 2022 this is by kite stenbuck for silicon era Toho Games announced that it will shut down Godzilla Destruction on January 31st, 2022 at noon JST. Uh, Excuse me, that would be Japan Standard Time. That translates to January 30th, 2022, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, This title will be the first out of three Godzilla mobile games to have its servers shut down. Godzilla Destruction is a mobile action game where the player controls the eponymous kaiju monster to wreak havoc in cities across the globe. While the game's main objective is to crush all buildings in the city, Godzilla also has to deal with the defending military and kaiju rivals. Destroying these enemies will let Godzilla collect experience to level up and improve its skills. The player can also use items obtained from clearing stages to spin the gacha and collect more monsters and upgrade items. Did you see on Twitter there was this joke tweet about how the person wishes there was a strategy RPG uh, with Godzilla involving deep... Yeah. yeah. (laughs) No, it wasn't. I thought it was a... No, not a strategy RPG. I thought it was just like a a, a, a turn-based, like, normal RPG. But with deep, deep relationship uh, yeah. mechanics and a dating sim. You can sim date the other kaiju, it. yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Now, there, like some of the older Godzilla games are RPG-like, mm-hmm. but they're not, yeah, it's not like... Not as not complex and layered as, as... And there is a kaiju dating simulator, huh. but it's not actual uh, Godzilla things. Interesting. And finally, in the bad ish news, Square Enix warns of congestion ahead of Final Fantasy XIV and Walker release. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. Ahead of the release of the Final Fantasy XIV and Walker expansion, Square Enix released a statement 
warning about potential congestion. This also includes pre preventative measures that it will take against congestion once Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker releases. Similarly to the release of the Stormblood expansion, instance areas will return to prevent congestion in high traffic areas. Additionally, the statements highlight was it the statements? No, the statement highlights the use of the visit another world server login feature. However, none of these measures are foolproof, and Square Enix states that the players may experience congestion in Final Fantasy XIV and Walker despite these uh, measures. Uh, click on the article if you want to read more. Alright, that's the bad ish news out of the way, and now over to Errol with the. Uh, other news. Yeah. Uh, so first we have Spike Chunsoft and Tokyo Games announced dark fantasy mystery game Enigma Archives Raincoat. Man, they never stop. <laughs> yeah. Written by Danganronpa series creator Kazutaka Kodaka. This is by Saramano for Gamatsu. Publisher Spike Chunsoft and developer Tokyo Games have announced Enigma Archives Raincoat, a dark fantasy mystery game from Danganronpa series creator Kazutaka Kodaka. Platforms and a release date were not announced. The game features a scenario written by Kodaka, music composed by Masafumi Takada, and character designs illustrated by Rui Komatsuzaki, all of whom previously worked on the Danganronpa series. You can visit the teaser website. It It's kind of like a, a welcome home Seems thing. to involve ghost. Yeah, uh, there's also that. But um, more, more on the relationship between Tokyo Games and Spike Chunsaw. It kind of feels like a homecoming for Kodaka. Yeah. Well, are you uh, interested in this? Uh, yep. I still need to play World's End Club. Still? <laughs> but I'm... Yeah. Okay. That's how bad it is, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not the game, but just how bad my backlog is. Yeah. <laughs> Next. I still need to finish uh, I the Sockman Files. There's also that. Next, and <laughs> I haven't played, and I haven't played Danganronpa three yet, and I got it years ago. Jeez, you will be forever busy. Next up, we yeah. have Thirteen Sentinels Aegis Rim coming to Switch on April 12, twenty twenty two. Shipments and digital sales top five hundred thousand. Uh, this is by Sal Romano for Gramatsu. Publisher Atlas and developer Vanilla will, will release a Switch version of Thirteen Sentinels Aegis Rim. On April 12, 2022 in the West and April 14th in Japan for 6,980 yen, the companies announced. Additionally, the companies announced that total shipments and digital sales for the PlayStation 4 version have surpassed 500,000 units. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim launched for PS4 in November 2019 in Japan and in September 2020 worldwide. Uh, click on the article if you want to read more and see the announcement trailers. I'm so happy this is a thing. Um, uh, yeah, uh, more people having access to the 30 Sentinels is a great thing. It being on Switch is also a great thing. Um, I should really get back to it. It's a, it's a very fun and very interesting game that makes you really think and consider the implications of uh, let's say a sci-fi narrative. Next up, Square Enix re-uploads Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 trailer to YouTube. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. Square Enix re-uploaded the Final Fantasy XIV trailer to its official YouTube channel. This has happened just days away from the release of Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. Whether it uh, be for promotion or for archival purposes. Square Enix has not said why it re-uploaded the trailer. Additionally, comments for the re-uploaded trailer are closed. Um, Final Fantasy XIV originally, uh, originally, yeah, that's it. Released in September 2010, the 1.0 trailer provided a glimpse into events that would ultimately shape the narrative of the title well into Shadowbringers. Um, it shows several prominent characters from the expansions, and it specifically uh, highlights those that appeared in Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers role quests. Uh, so click on the article if you want to see the trailer. Um, yes. Do you have any idea why it's they re-uploaded? 
there must just be it might just be some kind of story hint mm-hmm. like at first i thought maybe it was a mistake but then once people started writing about it and they kept it up i'm like maybe there's a reason they did that <laughs> I kind of think that this might lead to the timeline being re- reset and people going back. They, uh. they did say that this was the end of the Hydaelyn story. and Walker was the end of the Hydaelyn story. Yeah, so it, it might be, oh, we solved the problem behind the scenes, so we're returning you to the beginning uh, unbothered by any of our shenanigans. That's what I think, but I could be wrong. Hmm. Um, Silicon Era has the next one. Final Fantasy fourteen six point oh complete patch notes released. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era, as I mentioned. Square Enix has released a complete patch notes for Final Fantasy fourteen patch six point oh through its official website. The complete patch notes for Final Fantasy fourteen patch six point oh provide more precise information regarding updates that will arrive through the patch. However. The details available are mostly the same as those found in the preliminary patch notes. That said, Final Fantasy XIV 6.0 will feature a plethora of major and minor updates. And there you go. Hmm. Um, and also to add to that, 12 important updates... Uh, or details. Just, just go through it. Yeah, you can just I'll, go I'll through just it go briefly. Through it in the Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker Patch 6.0 patch notes. This is by friend of the show, Mike Williams. It's really happening, isn't it? For fan by it. Yeah, for fan by it. I'm sorry. Uh, as we enter December, there's a new holiday incoming. As Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker is set to release into early access on December 3rd. The rest get to join in on the journey on December 7th. As we seek to have our star and end, what? As we seek to save our star, oh, and end the Hydaelyn Zodiac storyline. Last night, Square Enix released a full patch notes for 6.0. As with any expansion patch, it's a lengthy list of changes, many of which have already been covered in previous live letters from the producer. Despite that, there are still errant, important details that you might, uh, might have missed. Below is a list of some of the details worth highlighting. Um, okay, f- I'll, I'll just skip uh, through most of it. It's uh, what are the Reaper and Sage starting unlock locations? What kind of tombstone rewards do we get for duty roulettes? Are belts gone? Roll quests. No, the belts are gone. Okay. No, the belts are gone. Okay. They are. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's been confirmed. Be- belts are gone. Roll quests will involve classic supporting characters, gatherers, and crafters delivered to the stadium, and you stadium. can die artifact gear after some quest completion. Uh, there's a lot more, so I highly advise you... There's more gender-neutral clothing items, yeah. healer limit breaks get a longer range, coffers are the new rewards from some older content, and all hail the new Omega... There's a new Omega mount, the Midlander here gets the cover art face... And DualShock and DualSense controller features come to PC. And you can read more about all that in the actual article. Yeah, if you want to read more, click on the link. Next up, Final Fantasy XIV surpasses 25 million users. This is a lot of people. This is by Josh Tolentino for Silicon Era. Final Fantasy XIV now has more than 25 million users. This figure applies to registered accounts. The statistic uh, comes from the development team at Square Enix, which held a pre-launch stream event for the Endwalker expansion. Uh, the figure is a total of the of all Final Fantasy fourteen users in the five official yeah official regions where the game is offered: Japan, North Korea, uh, Europe, China, and South Korea. This is uh, by way of Famitsu. So, you know, yay. Uh, even more Final Fantasy news. Final Fantasy 13 2 is making its way to Xbox Game Pass along with Stardew Valley. Uh, Valley. Uh, Stardew Valley. Final Fantasy 13 2, One Piece Pirate Warriors 4, and more in early December. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. 
Uh, Microsoft has announced new titles coming to the Xbox Game Pass for console and PC in early... No, that's not true. It's early December. December. It's December. Yeah. <laughs> which includes Sardew Valley, Final Fantasy XIII 2, which I plan to play and finally beat, but I might also not because I, I stopped at the end, so, you know, it's fine. One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. Oops, he put the, I just noticed he put the colon in the wrong place. Oh. One Piece Pirate Warriors yeah. 4. I'm, I'm unfamiliar with Oops. that game, but okay. Um, <laughs> I think this is oh, yeah. probably on the heels of, of the anime hitting a thousand episodes. So this, yeah. this is a nice surprise. It's good. Nice and welcome surprise. Yeah. So uh, I'll finally get to try it now. Yeah. Um, also, I do recommend on the Western side of things. I do recommend Aliens Fire Team Elite if you uh, if you so if choose. you have two friends to play with and yeah. you're a big Aliens fan. Yeah. So it's a good one. Yep. And and our our buddy Kevin the Red Herb can can uh, vouch for me on that. Okay. We've never played together. It's just he's a he's one of the biggest Alien fans I know. <laughs> okay. Speaking of Muso games, Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires demo for PS5, Xbox Series, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch now available in Japan. This is by Sal Romano for Komatsu. A demo for Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires is now available for the aforementioned consoles. The demo features both the tutorial and edit mode, including excuse me, siege battles. The officer... Wait, the officer you create? Oh, okay, the officer you create. Can be, <laughs> yeah, it made me think yeah. twice about the officer. Okay, the officer you create can be transferred over to the full game when it launches. The politic system. Okay, the politic system is not playable in the demo. The demo can be downloaded via the following links. So check the article to see which links that would be. Mm. And uh, yeah, back to air roll. Yes. I don't know why you said it like that. Yeah, I don't but, know either. Okay. It just came out like that. <laughs> uh, Digimon Survive has been rated for Switch, hopefully putting an end to the delays. ESRB warns of poop attacks. This is by Ryan Craddock for Nintendo Live. I beg your pardon. Fans have had to be pa- very patient when it comes to Digimon Survive. Originally planned to launch in 2019, but then delayed to 2020, 2021, and then most recent delay to 2022 has certainly been a long time coming. Thankfully, though, the game has now been officially rated by the ESRB, suggesting that its release isn't too far away. If you're interested, it's been rated T, and here's what the ESRB had to say. This is a visual novel with strategy role-playing game elements in which players follow Japanese teenagers lost in a world of monsters. As players follow the storyline, they periodically engage in turn-based battles using Digimon, monsters with special powers slash abilities. As human and Digimon characters move around grid-like battlefields, players select attack moves slash skills from a menu and watch short animations of monsters executing moves. Attacks can include kicking, biting, blast of energy, and elemental burst. One cutscene briefly depicts a still image of a bloodstained corpse. Out of a variety of attack moves, Digimon can perform a poop toss, which is depicted as a cartoony poo coil thrown at opponents and is accompanied by squishy sound effects. A, uh, a couple swears appear in the dialogue. I wasn't expecting that last part. The poop mm. thing, yeah. Numamon, Numamon throws poop. Okay, so it, it all makes sometimes sense. Sometimes it's called poop toss, sometimes it's called poop throw, sometimes it's called something else. Alright. Um, next up, we have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl update patch fixes bugs. This is by Kazuma Shimoto for Silicon Era. The Pokemon Company released new information regarding the Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl version 1.12 update patch. The patch includes two adjustments that will allow players for... Wait, that will allow for better gameplay. I'm sorry. Um, Specifically, one big... uh, One bug fix in the Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl update patch fixes the... Bug uh, that hardlock players from progressing the game in some circumstances. Shout out to Famitsu. Okay, did did you come into contact with this bug, perhaps? Which bug? Like that that um kind of hard locks you out of progression. No. Okay, I didn't even know it was a thing. Oh well. Yeah. 
Uh, and then back to Errol. Uh, dot hack GU last recode coming to Switch Mar March 10th, 2022. Currently available on PS4 and PC by Saramano for Gamatsu once again. Publisher Bandai Namco and developer CyberConnect2 will release dot hack GU last recode on S for Switch on March 10th, 2022 worldwide, the company's announced. Uh, it first announced, I mean, it first launched for PlayStation 4 and PC via Steam in November 2017. It includes hack, Dot Hack GU Volume 1 Rebirth, Volume 2 Reminisce, Volume 3 Redemption, and the newly developed Volume 4 Reconnection. I've had that game sitting on my shelf for years. <laughs> I have yet to really play it besides the demo. Yeah, same. Okay. I like it. But? But I just haven't really gotten around to it yet. At least it's not Sword Art Online. That's all I have to say about that. Anyway. Okay, okay. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Xbox achievements for unannounced Taiko no Tatsujin game Surface. This is once again by Saramano for Gamatsu. Xbox achievements for an unannounced Taiko no Tatsujin title have surfaced on true achievements. While the title of the game is currently listed as T-Tablet for XC... Its 89 achievements indicate it is a Taiko no Tatsujin title. Bandai Namco filed trademarks for Taiko no Tatsujin Rhythm Festival and Taiko no Tatsujin The Drum Master on November 2nd. Uh, I think The Drum Master was already a thing, but I'm not sure. Uh, four achievements on the list point to the new title likely being called Taiko no Tatsujin The Drum Master. Those are Welcome to Drum Master, How to Drum Master, Drum Master, and Best of Drum Master. Hold on, I'm looking up to see if this was a previously released thing. Okay. Is this a port? Because Taiko Drum Master is from... was released in North America for PlayStation 2 in 2004. So unless they got the... This is either a new thing with a similar title or they... Actually, got the relicensed all those songs, which uh, okay. would be interesting. Although th th that's a different Taiko Drum Master, and this is the Drum Master. So I wonder if it's any different. I guess we'll see. It would be probably the first Taiko game on Xbox, I believe. Uh, again, I. Mm hmm. Let me check that real quick. Okay. I think, uh, unless there was one on the original Xbox, I'm. I doubt it. Yeah, yeah, there was not. Okay. On the Wikipedia page, it lists all the platforms, and Xbox is not there. Well, there you go. Maybe it'll be on Game Pass. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> um. Next up. Mecha racing game Break Arts 2 is now available on PlayStation 4. This is by Kai Stenbuck for Silicon Era. Playism has released Break Arts 2 on the PS4. The Mecha racing game is now available globally on the PlayStation Store. One of Break Arts 2 biggest features is mech customization. Players can choose from a wide variety of robot parts. Some of them even feature dynamic movements, such as folding and rotations. Additionally, players can carry weapons and traps that they can then use to damage and slow down other opponents. They can also use the override system to make their mech temporarily invincible from such impediments. The game features offline single player and online multiplayer modes, and the races support up to six participants. Players can also customize their mech's winning pose should they make it onto the top three podium. Break Arts 2 is a sequel to the 2015 mobile game Break Arts Cyber Bat. So there was... Mm. So there was a Break Arts 1. It was a mobile game. Break art oh, cyber, cyber battle racing. And the reason I might have not been able to find it, so it was made by the Japanese indie team Mercury Studio. Hmm. The prequel is no longer available to download as Playism took it down from mobile app stores recently on August 31st, 2021, which I think was before I talked about this game. And that might explain why I couldn't find hmm. it, but it was weird that it. Also because everything went to Break Arts 2 and I didn't know Break Arts had the Cyber Battle Racing subtitle. Alright. Do you want me to pick up the last one? 
Uh, what's the last one? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, and finally, in the other news, Nintendo 64 and Nintendo Switch Online adds Paper Mario on December 10th. This is by Saoramano for Gamatsu. A Nintendo 64 and Nintendo Switch Online will add the original Paper Mario on December 10th, Nintendo announced. Um, we can click on our article for a full uh, overview of the game and some trailers. So, uh, watch that to your heart's content. Okay, that was. Yeah, the Paper other Mario news. 64, I really like. But, yeah. It's kind of. Two months. comes two months after the. Uh, <laughs> you got one game, one new game, two months after the. Uh, the fun the feature was released, so oh, people okay. are not happy about that. No, I get it. People get don't it. mind that it what it is. It's just the timing of it all. Yeah. Um. All right. So we didn't really have uh, you know, any main topic ideas. We have the game awards next week, but I don't really have any predictions, mm. and those are usually more Western focused anyway. Yeah, that is true. So we thought about we thought about maybe like talking a little bit about the best games to play on vacation. I'm just thinking I, I was just thinking of like games that help me relax, like uh anything most things with building. So like Dragon Quest Builders two, Animal Crossing. Uh probably Dragon Quest in general is kind of I don't know, it's kind of relaxing to me because there's mm-hmm. there's not always like a sense of even when like you're saving the world and like and maybe like things are not good because of the villain it's like there's not th- that much of a sense of urgency and and you know you, there's still cute monsters everywhere so it's kind of like no i get i get you i get you okay uh, uh i've been thinking I'm, about mm-hmm. trying to get into mm-hmm. dragon quest builders 2 again well, there you go. Um, I saw it in my Game Pass list, and I was contemplating on installing it. But you know, uh, Halo is right around the corner, so I don't want to spend too much on. Uh, well, not spend too yeah, much. For, but devote too much time into other yes. stu- in other stuff. Plus, yeah, and Monster Rancher is coming out next week. Yeah, so you have a busy few days <laughs> ahead of and, you. And and Yu Gi Oh and Yu Gi Oh Rush Duel, but that's not on the eShop yet. Uh, even mm. though it's a digital only release, it's not up for like pre order or anything. So I'm like, that's weird. Unless uh, they're just gonna do it unless they're just gonna put it up like right before next week and be like, Hey, here you go, Yu Gi Oh game. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I be, don't ha- know. Be, be happy. Hopefully um, hopefully it gets put up. Otherwise it's just like something weird's going on with it. Well, they've been pretty good with Yu Gi Oh releases the last no, couple uh, of years no i know it's just it's just weird that there's no like pre-order oh, but it okay. doesn't seem to be on the north american e-shop right now even though it comes out next week hmm interesting next S- tuesday or thursday so is, is that all you can think of when it comes to people having christmas break and and looking for a game uh it's like games that don't have a. Mm, I'm trying to think. Like an early stop after, let's say, ten levels of platforming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like I said, I said Animal Crossing and. Animal Crossing is a good and, pick. Uh, what else did I say? Uh, Dragon Quest Dragon Builders. Dragon Quest Builders too. Um. Uh, messing around and doing stuff in like doing stuff in MMOs that aren't the main quest mm-hmm. or RPGs that just aren't the main doing side quests that aren't you know battling a bunch of things kind of like vibing that can be pretty relaxing <laughs> yeah just uh, existing in those worlds just existing let's see uh, what can I advise for a Christmas break game uh, well if we yeah Tuesday if, if we're looking at this... Yu-Gi-Oh! is supposed to come out on Tuesday. So okay, that's weird. so there you go. Um, if we're thinking about games that came out this year, probably Tales of Arise. Um, that is a meaty JRPG. Um, 
It's very colorful. And you can do you can do auto battle if you so wish. <laughs> you can do auto battle if you so wish, um, or you know test your skills and dive right into the 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 action real time combat. Um, I could see them making like a like a Tales of Farm Sim type of thing. As well, they already had the farm in a rise, but but like a more full. I could see them like doing something like that I, in I the future. Th- I think. Mm. I don't think they will, but they, prob- but I could they, see they that. probably won't. But if they do, I think it'll be a more of a communal thing, f- starring different characters from different series. Um, Maybe, yeah. So. I, I wasn't really thinking that far into it. I'm just saying, like, I could see that happening um, at some point. Let's see. There's also Scarlet Nexus. There is. Yeah, I wouldn't call that very relaxing, but well, not relaxing, right. but you know, to fill in the time. There's also Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, Dynasty Warriors. And I know what you're thinking. It's like, oh, that's a lot. It's like, yeah, but it's a lot of mindless button mashing in a lot of them. Yeah, let's say you're... It's just kind of a... There's like a certain quality to it. Yeah, let's say your cousin Frank, your younger cousin Frank, came over for the Christmas holiday. And you have to entertain him by some way or another. So, uh... I'll pay Frank. Want to play uh, <laughs> Berserk Muso? No, just kidding. Not that one. Yeah, not that one. Um, honestly. <laughs> not that that one's bad. I don't know how that one is, uh, but it's just because of Berserk. Yeah. <laughs> um, honestly, the One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 might be your best intro into this um, because One Piece has a very good, broad, universal appeal. Um, it, or Gundam Muso. Or there's Maybe. that. Uh-huh. Um, but. And uh, the, uh, real quick, the Pirate Warriors is also a very decent distillation of a hundred episodes of the anime. Right. So, uh, and, and it goes into its own story too. Yeah, by the end. So if if you're you know, if you're interested in One Piece but don't have enough time to watch a bajillion episodes, maybe give Pirate Warriors for a try. When okay, it, come on, it's only a thousand. Only a thousand. A thousand? It's like a thousand times 20, 20 minutes. Like a thousand twenty something chapters. That's, I think that's, by a, now. that's a lot of minutes. Um, <laughs> you can read it faster than you can watch. <laughs> probably. It's okay. Probably. Um, let's see. What else can I advise? Five hundred fifty is also kind of like a chill. Yeah. RPG. I'd say so. It's it's easy to pick up. It's not that dense. Oh. oh, so it was funny. Um, mm-hmm. my my friend he has the um, the regalia amount in Final Fantasy fourteen. Ooh, cool! And I was like, and I I had forgotten to attune to a couple of uh, aetherites mm-hmm. for a quest thing. So I was like, hey, uh, are you doing anything wrong? He's like, no. I'm like, hey, can you give me a ride? So then, <laughs> <laughs> so then he just comes, <laughs> and yeah. he's just flying around, uh. and the, and like the music starts playing too. Yeah, that's that's definitely one way to travel. Um, hopefully, we won't, you know, um, we won't be needing such lofty oh, thing. Well, oh, uh-huh. oh, Monster Hunter stories too. Well, there you go. You had to plug that in somehow, but you did. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, if you're looking, I do wish there was a little more of a raising aspect to it. That's- is there like totally not a raising aspect to it or is it well there so so you can you do the you hatch them but as soon as you hatch them they like they're they're, uh they're in their baby forms for a second and then once it gets to the stat screen they're all grown up okay it's not (laughs) so bad but i digress i just wish there was a little more involvement with the baby form instead of that just like one instance when they hatch yeah Um, um and then there's the gene splicing stuff. Yeah. It, um, yeah, but I think that's more for uh, people interested in battling. Um, if you have an Xbox and if you have access to Game Pass, get that. Um, and then you should be story set. of story of seasons. Wait, I could check Rune Factory. I could check my Game Pass app and and see what else is worth mentioning. Um, not Harvest Moon. Well, not recent Harvest Moon. Older yeah. Harvest Moon. <laughs> Older Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons. Uh, 
Or current story of seasons. Yeah, current story of seasons. Uh, well, you can do older story of seasons too, because that's just the same thing as Harvest Moon <laughs> at yeah. that point. Uh, let's see. You, we have I the Somnium Files. The yes. there's Austria ascending, but it didn't score as oh, well as Oh, uh, Balan Wonder World. No, nope, no, 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 no. That's where, <laughs> that's where I draw the line. Uh, there's Blinks the Time Game Sleeper. Year. Blinks the Time Sleeper. I still gotta play that. Uh, Code Vein. I the one problem with Game Pass is that mm-hmm. like a lot of times when I buy games, if I buy games that aren't like that i know that aren't exclusive to other consoles it's like oh i don't know this might be on game pass later <laughs> yeah <laughs> that kind of thing yeah i, I had the but same then problem a, then there's a reverse which is like i want to play this but i don't know when it's going off of game pass yeah there's that because i was l- looking at the amazon sale and the uh the xbox black friday sales and they had mass effect legendary edition and I wanted it, but I, yeah, I saw I've, that. I've read the rumors that it might be coming to Game Pass. So I was like, and you can play the old Mass Effects on Game Pass already. Yeah, if you have Game no, Pass Ultimate. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I've, I've already played them. Uh, there was also Guardians of the Galaxy I wanted to play, but I, I have no time, so it it made no sense to do. It. I, I I've heard that the combat in it isn't all that great, so I might just watch some cutscenes or something. Okay, that's fair. Um, let's see real quick. What else can I find you? It's so weird because Guardians of the Galaxy seems like the type of thing that should have been for me. You know, outer space mercenaries, older music. I mean, I I take and, and it just didn't. It just well not for, not the video game, but the movie itself just didn't click for me. Okay. Maybe give the game a try then, because what I'm hearing so far is that it looks... It's a lot better. It looks like the movies, but uh, in terms of characterization and storytelling, it's a lot better. Right. So maybe mm-hmm. th- this is where it would be up your alley. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Again, I'll probably just watch some cutscenes or something. Just... No. Well, I'm not going to say buy a game you, you're not willing to play. Uh, let's see... Puzzle games can be fun. Can yeah. be pretty um Tetris connecting, but they can also be very <laughs> stressful. It just depends. I'd say try Tetris Connected. That's that's a good good pick. Puzzle Puzzle Bobble. Puzzle Bobble 3D Puzzle Bobble 3D Vacation Odyssey. It has mm. the word vacation in the name. I yeah, sure. But yeah, whatever. Um Octopath Traveler. What? You got a problem with Puzzle Bobble? No, I just don't, I just don't want to be too on the nose. Puzzle Bobble's fine. I, I just don't want to be like, oh, it's vacation. It has vacation on the name. Oh, in the I, name. Just, I, I just... I just realized that as I was saying. <laughs> it's just not... It's no, not it's, like fine. I it's fine. It's yeah. fine. Uh, let's see... Mm. Strategy games? Did I already name Scarlet Nexus... I think Fire I already Emblem? said Scarlet Nexus. Fire Emblem is a good pick. Uh, it it especially I'm three houses. Like turn-based strategy games. Uh, Fire Emblem is like f- four campaigns into one tiny cartridge. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, um, Mario plus Rabbids. Mm-hmm. That's a good Mario, pick. Mario and Kirby, easy platformers. Yeah. You can well, never depending go on the game. Some Mario games are kind of hard, but. But most of the time, you know, pretty easy platformers. Yeah, I think that's about it. Uh... 2D Mario. No, 3D Mario? I don't know. Newer Mario games. Also, also, if you have Game Pass, you have access to all the mainline Yakuza games. So, uh, yes. uh, Do that if you want to have a good time. Um, Yes. I think that's about it. I can't think of anything else to play yeah nothing else really comes to mind there's plenty of jrpgs and farm sims and strategy rpgs and easy platformers i'd say near replicant but maybe don't depress yourself over christmas don't don't do that no 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 (laughs) so uh yeah that's that i think that's about our picks for the christmas break um 
Yeah. <clears throat> Which we're doing this episode kind of early because we have to like switch everything around because the Game Awards is during our record usual recording time. So. <laughs> well, is it, it's all. Wouldn't that be, be next week's up. episode? What? Yeah. No, no. Game Awards isn't next week's episode. It's the week after. Uh, okay. Because of the yeah yeah, yeah yeah no I get it, I get it, I get it. okay uh, so we'll be a little late on that news yeah. sorry everybody no, but it, that's not blame <laughs> Jeff Keighley <laughs> it'll be fine <laughs> um, do you also maybe have a a, a reading recommendation or a, a watching recommendation for the the holidays I'd say that that JRPG mm-hmm. book but it's I don't know if it's on sale anymore mm. like they did a reprint. Oh, not our friend Nadia Oxford, her Mega Man X Field uh, uh, Maverick Field, field Guide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she also has one for the original Mega Man series. Oh. Very interesting. Okay, so there you go. Uh, plenty to read. And th- there's also this Dragon Quest book that I want to read by Austin King, who I believe also writes for Screen Rant. Okay, that's cool. Um, um, and they does the uh, Dragon Quest FM podcast. If there's also the psychology of Final Fantasy, which I haven't read yet because I want to play more of the games first, but uh, I know Natalie Flores wrote a foreword for that. Mm, that's cool. There's also a collection of essays uh, for boss fight books. I forgot what the collection itself is called. If, uh, if you on, search it on Amazon, you, but you, it has, you'll find it. It has uh, our friend Alexa Ray Correa. She, she did a, an essay for Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, it is called Nightmare Mode. Huh? That's that's a boss fight. A boss fights book anthology. Okay, that that might sound a bit better than Nightmare Mode, I guess. Uh, yeah, I have plenty of books to read. <laughs> if, <laughs> Over the, I, a lot of digital book sales happened, and I just like I want to read more books, and then I ended up getting a ton of books. If so. if I could. Uh, give you two recommendations it would be the manga series blue box which is a very good slice of life romance series um very very good like it it just hits all the right notes and it's not too dramatic it's not too funny it's not too quippy it's it's just enough and it's so good um Let's see, there's also Danda Dan, which is a very cool uh, shonen uh, action comedy series with some some slight horror elements, but it's very small. You'll be fine, I promise. Um, but it's so inventive, and the line work is so clean, and you have aliens that are quoting the Bee Gees? No, Boney M. Or the Bee Gees. Maybe both. Anyway, mm. there are weird aliens in that in that comic, so uh, give it a read. Um, mm. Besides that, yeah, I think that should cover it. Um, so yeah, that those are those have been our winter break recommendations. So uh, tell us in the comments uh, or in the Twitter at replies what you've been playing, listening, watching. Uh, give us your recommendations um, yeah. and we'll shout them out next week so uh, thank you for listening um, this has been fun yeah. and uh, you know the usual rigmarole rigor- is that the word? Well, yeah, wash your hands, keep wearing a mask get vaccinated if you can Yeah. Um, um, be kind to each other be kind to yourself Yes. go play video yes. games go watch anime go read manga go listen to go eat good food go listen to Taylor Swift um, um <laughs> sure if you're into that hey hey Taylor Swift is one of our generation's best lyricists I'll stake mm. that claim um, thank you for listening and we'll see you that. next time. Goodbye. Yep. Matinee.